good morning, everybody. Happy additional fulfillment day. I guess every day is an additional fulfillment day, isn't it? Until we are done. Welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne, and disembodied hands, Justin, John, Quindy, and, well, whoever else is hanging out in the ether. How are you guys today? It's in time. It is. It's me. It's me. Again, as always. Ooh. Um, and I need to get my colors out, so I'm going to put some colors away and take other other colors out and generally be confusicating while I listen to how you guys are doing. I see highs. I see, I see many highs on the Twitch audience. So today we're working on, here, let's just give you guys a mini. I'm okay today. I'm okay today. It's almost the end of the month, which is a, you know, a stressful time for me because it's the Patreon, Patreon stuff that I'm working on. Other than that, it's good. Let's see here. So much stuff. So many colors. So for those of you with the um, Reaper Virtual Expo paint set, I was playing around with carbon scoring yesterday, which is a very nice color. I like it a lot. Much less busy at my place than at Reaper. Yeah, well, I used to, you know, for all the past Kickstarters, I've been there for fulfillment. This is the first one that I haven't been helping with. So, you know, I remember... I'm, I was one of the people scooting around with little carts. I really loved picking orders. That's the most fun part, in my opinion. But some people are really good at Tetris, like Ron's. So they always have him packing boxes. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Yeah, it is annoying, like, that Twitch is, like, you know, renewing on the, the iPhone is... Ugh. Like that. All right, let's see here. Oh, yeah, we're using all of our cool stuff. I packed all the colors you were going to use into the Gloom and Grave box, which is the uh, Fast palette. Uh, we chose uh, on stream, we chose what colors we wanted to use on this model. Good morning, good morning. So we had a bunch of uh, kind of neat, uh, that's our color range that we're going to be working with on this mini. Whenever you're doing limited palette, and most of these colors are from Gloom and Grave. Um, I think we have one, we have two from Dark Reach and uh, four from Gloom and Grave as far as the fast palettes go. But we decided to use a bunch of new colors on this one to play around. So our base is going to be playing around with Death Knight Black, which was suggested in chat, and highlighting it with Grave Gloom. So we'll be going, going a little Nurgle to, to, to cross the company streams there. Hey there, Bob and Julie. How's it going? <clears throat> yeah, the, I I mean, I like an awful lot of these colors in this uh, gloom, and, gloom and Grave, and they definitely are going to help us paint Mr. Uh, Mr. Harold. Uh, Mr. Non-Crimson Harold. <laughs> Although we are going to put some red on him. His accents, his cape's going to be red. And we'll probably thin that red down and uh, use it as a, turn it into a pink for some of his tentacles, too. So we also have a lovely, lovely purple to do with that, but it's a very reddish purple. So let's put these guys to the side. So we have all of our colors available. This gives us a very nice range of colors. All these six, col six colors that we're painting this entire model with. Hello, Lady Nim. Welcome, welcome. I'm, I'm your, uh, I'm interrupting your regularly scheduled, uh, Kickstarter programming because <laughs> I'm the other regularly scheduled programming that other, other, other programming. Oh, but guys, I will be, I will be taking the fourth, the, the official fourth, i.e. the fifth, um, off. So Monday, Monday will be just, you know, I assume I'm guessing it's an optional work day for Kickstarter fulfillment, though it's the fourth, uh, with Reaper and typically a holiday. So I'm not sure. If you'll have any streaming on Monday, or if Reaper's just gonna like go belly up for a day, not sure. But yeah, these fast palette uh, colors are really nice. So let's mix up. We're using uh, our Death Knight Black with just a tiny touch of the Grave Gloom in it for kind of a, a base coat. But I do want to, here, I'll move that white card out of the way. That'll let you guys see the color, see the model better. So I'm going to use pure Death Knight Black to do some shading on this. Even though it's a very dark color, because we added a little bit of the green to our base coat, um, it is a little bit lighter than the pure Death Knight Black. So we can use Death Knight Black to shade it. 
But usually when you're starting with a really dark tone, your shadows, your base coat, ki coat kind of becomes your shadow and then you work up from there. <laughs> Thank you, Moonglooms. I appreciate it. I'm going to do a four drops of this and one drop of Grave Gloom. And then I think our next was a four to two. Technically, I think we only had a little bit. Ah, oh no, oh no, watery. Whenever your paint comes out kind of watery, go oh no's like I just did. And then wipe it out of your palette so that you don't use it because it's got binder in it. It didn't shake up well enough because I didn't shake it because <laughs> I was uh, distracted and I shook my other color. Just use a little Kleenex. You didn't waste much paint, don't worry. Pigments and uh, resins are heavier than water, and so water-based paints do separate. It's just a fact of life. Some of the thicker-bodied paints don't separate as much, but then you've got to fight them a little bit more. So that's a little bit, but I think it's going to be fine. I did shake it up well. We'll try, yeah, we'll try that. If I have to add a little bit more green, then I have to add a little bit more green. So this is actually kind of a bluey, bluey, purpley black. Uh, oh yeah, I put all my brushes away. I'm like, where are my brushes? Um, they're on the rack where they ought to be. It's one of those days, guys. This is a Friday for me. This is like a, this is like a Friday for me, but it's a strong, it's not one of those Fridays where you're like, yeah, it's Friday. I'm going to slack just a little. It's one of those Fridays where you're like, I'm going to hit the wall hard today. It's one of those Fridays. Yeah, that's a lot of paint. I mean, a lot of there are people on the stream that have crazy amounts of paint, Guru. Apparently, you're one of them. Like, and that's coming from me, who made it all. <laughs> but I don't even own it all. I mean, I, I used to own it all, but I've pruned it down a bit over the years. Because I can mix, uh, and so, and I enjoy mixing. You can get some really unique tones by mixing. There we go. Got our bluey greeny color. I think I do need one more drop of green in there. There's more of our base coaty color. And then we've got our straight up Death Knight. Yeah, Lady Nam, the best you can do is like order it yourself and you know because you can always put in a special order with most game stores ask them if you can order some reaper paint order a bunch of it and get your friends onto it and have them order from the game store too then if the game store is constantly having to order reaper master series they might actually consider getting um a rack mk that would be like me actually Anne is the person to make you i am not Rhonda. Rhonda and I are indeed two different people. Or am I, or are you just generally shouting out to the universe, Rhonda? In which case, if Rhonda made you spend money on this palette, it was well spent. Because I also endorse this palette. Oh, yeah, I mean, definitely. Use all the paint. Like I'm going to argue, I mean, I made most of it. So you can see this is kind of a purpley black. It's not nightshade, it's a little bit different. But we're going to look at the model and we're going to see, do you see how, well, uh, here, let me get this out of the, out of the way so you can see the color of the model. Let's get in focus. Let's focus, people. Hey there, Bryce. How's it going? So as you can see from the light actually just falling on the model, you can see the heavy shadow here. So we're going to paint exactly what we see. This is why it's nice to have an overhead light source, like, you know, a lamp that's kind of up here, is uh, you can use it to figure out where your highlights and shadows go. It's how I started trying to figure out realistic highlights and shadows. Is I just held my mini up under the lamp and I painted where I saw the shadows fall. Ah, yeah. That's a bummer. Wrong name. I mean, there's two of us, right? <laughs> I'm key. Rhonda also has a show, so I forgive you. It's no problem. All right. So likewise, back here, you can see where your shadows ought to be. So you may as well paint them. Since the light is doing this handy um, assist for you, just take advantage of it. And paint in that shadow. That makes it even darker. But now that will show up as shadow even when we lift it into the light. 
Yeah, when that happens, just ordering online is a thing. Especially when Reaper gives you free shipping, you know, depending on where you are in the world, of course. So I'm going to also shade, like, at, underneath the arm, because I know that that's going to be in shadow. And I'm going to look for a few other little details. Like, anywhere I want a detail to come out more, even though this shade is, like, almost the same color as our base color. Um, I did not really touch on airbrushing, because I'm not an airbrusher. That's uh, Michael. Um, or, sorry, Lovejoy. Michael Proctor and Aaron Lovejoy both uh, both do a lot of airbrush. Um, Ed has wanted an airbrush line for a while, Lady Nim. It's just, uh, you know, getting it done and, and finding the space for it. I mean, our paint, our regular paint, thins for the airbrush, like, wonderfully. So you don't need an airbrush line. Um, but, you know, we do recognize that it is easy, easier for use. So... Whether it will be a thing, though, is is a question for Ed. The thing with airbrush airbrush paints, guys, is I mean, remember, unless you get unless you go out and make a special base for it, um, it's just like thin down regular paint with mediums. So, you know. A lot of those, some use different, uh, I'm sure that, that most airbrush lines use a slightly different base. But in general, if you are, if you are budget conscious, just use regular paint. But if you want an airbrush line, yes, Reaper might make one. Ed was trying to figure it out, but that is a question for him. The thing is, airbrush lines never never uh, encompass all of the colors of the regular lines, right? Because then you'd just be making a um, you know a different version of every uh... yeah. See, Bryce, that's that's what I would do too. It's good to be king, except then you have to uh, deal with all the BS too, Emke. <laughs> if being CEO was just like all just sitting around eating bonbons and making decisions that were easy, then it would be you know good to be king. But unfortunately, there are really hard business decisions to make, too. And headaches to work with. You know, jobs. What are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's just it, right? Is what what's going to be better for Reaper as a company over the long haul? Making an entire line of airbrush paint or just educating people on how to use it in an airbrush. Just like any, all you have to do is go to Reaper's YouTube and watch House of Vex with Aaron Lovejoy. And Aaron is pretty much using our paint to airbrush live when his show is on. And then it goes up on our YouTube for you. So for now, education is the way that we're going. And like I said, education using the main line is always going to get you more options. Because when Reaper makes 500 colors, we're not going to do another 500 colors in an airbrush line. So, see how I'm shading there, guys. All these tight folds, they're all going to be a little bit darker. And the bottom of the sleeve is going to be a little bit darker. So, we're just applying this very beautiful, I might add. I'm, I'm becoming a fan of this Death Knight Black. I may have to switch. <laughs> I think it's a liner. Is it a liner, guys? Y'all, y'all are so like more educated. Yeah, it is. That's why I like it. So what this is, guys, is like if you took nightshade purple and you made it a liner, which makes it actually easier to shade with. So I think I'm a fan. I think I'm a fan. Pretty sure there's a House of X this Friday. Awesome. But yeah, I mean, take advantage of the fact that Aaron's doing this great show for us. Like, he is a master of airbrushing. He uses it in his day-to-day -day work. And uh, he's very good at teaching how to use it. He makes it he makes it appear very simple. He breaks it down. 
He's very good with it, and he shows you the high potential things you can do with it. But his strategy is also just very, very simple, which is nice because it's accessible, right? He believes, he makes me, even me believe that I can airbrush successfully. And I am an airbrush noob who is scared of the airbrush and doesn't pick it up. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Quindy, I, I feel you. Yeah. End of the month information overload for me. So I'm amazed that my brain still has two cells to rub together. This is uh, Death Knight Black. It is a liner from the Gloom and Grave Fast Palette box set. It is, uh, as I just said, Grey Wolf, it is a liner, and uh, that makes it easier to shade with. Uh, it's, it's almost like if you took Nightshade Purple and made it into a liner, which um, I'm loving, so... Makes it just a little bit more transparent. And guys, transparency is not an issue. It's a feature. It helps you get these beautiful, smooth layers. Look at how nice this is looking already. And I'm not even putting any work into it. It's just effortless. Yeah, so put these on your buy list for ReaperCon for sure, guys. That's why I'm using them, because, you know, all this stuff... It's going to be coming along in the ReaperCon boxes. Now, I will say, um, just to keep everything very Kickstarter-oriented here, that I did get my shipping notice from Reaper yesterday that my Bones 5 Kickstarter order has shipped. So soon, TM, um, we'll probably be swapping some models that I ordered into the stream. And we probably will be using some of the paint as well. Yeah, I will have loot. I will share with you guys what I got when it when it arrives. I will totally. Uh, I won't necessarily do an unboxing, but I'll totally show you guys my loot. I didn't order it like that much because I know I've got so much to work on anyway. But some of it was just too cool, and I had to order it. All right, so you can see how the shading. Even though, and you can kind of see, let's see, where's our base coat? I think our base coat only remains up on the hood. So you can see how dark this color was at the outset, but that Death Knight Black is just dark enough to give you some really beautiful shading on that cloth. See how everything is coming out more. So even if you're using a dark color, don't think you can't shade it. If you're using anything that's lighter than black, you have a shadow option. Right, but you should be able to buy, I hope you'd be able to buy components like the fast palettes. Like, I'm assuming the fast palettes are going to be up for sale after that, Grey Wolf. Or at least during the con, you'll be able to buy them separately. Like, even if they come in a swag box, I we almost always have triads available at the show and online during the show. So I would, I would be very surprised if, uh, if those... Fast palette boxes were not available separately for sale, which will make them much more affordable than buying an entire swag box. All right, I am going to get the inside of the sleeve. Never forget your insides of the sleeves. Right, exactly. I'm just telling you they're worth it. Lady Nim, that sounds like something that would be smart and uh, also very doable depending on the uh, scheduling and, you know, what else Reaper is trying to keep on top of. Um, but doing a special box with with past uh, discontinued or special event paints. I mean, we did a ReaperCon paint color box not long ago, so it's very, very viable. All right, I got to get this shadow on the front of this guy now. Now, if you look, you can see that most of him, until until his cloth starts to come out down here, most of this is in shadow. So we are going to block it in in shadow. I'm just going to paint this Death Knight black over the front. I may come back and highlight it at some point, or I may just make it very dark. Because I do want him to be a dark and brooding figure, so... Taking advantage of deep shadows to put more darkness into his color scheme is probably not a bad idea. And even though this is down in the light, I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. I'm going to, you know, shade it, uh, put the shadow down the middle, even though this is technically coming out to catch the light. 
I'll probably knock it back because it would catch the light. Eventually, I'll knock it back. But right now, I want that shaded. Right. So, yeah, since we do uh, tend to do some of that commemorative stuff to make it available again, I would not be surprised if it is in the cards. Though Sadie, I think, did point out that many of the colors in these fast palette sets are, uh, like, uh, close, they're close to some of the canceled colors. And what, you know, the thing is canceled colors are canceled because they don't sell, right? They don't have great sales numbers. So if we're going to put out something that's close, we try to tweak it so that it actually becomes even better or more useful than it was before. For example, the redstone triad was my reimagine of the terracotta triad. The terracotta triad was a long time ago triad that just didn't sell. It was probably just a little bit too pink. So with redstone, I went a little warmer to see if that would sell better than the uh, terracotta. Because I feel like we need that color, but you... Uh, you, you might want a slightly different version of it. it. might be a little more popular. So that's what you do when you're designing paint. If something doesn't sell, but you think it's a color that's really uh, useful in the line, you try to come up with a version of it that will sell. Yeah, Samurai Jack, that's never a bad strat. To give away stuff you don't like to the kids at ReaperCon. They, they make out like little bandits, but. <laughs> I have a, I have a definite like shoulder issue today. Oh, GVD, I almost missed you. Subscribed at tier one. Subscribed for 13 months. Thank you. Thanks very much for the resub. Alrighty. I think. I think we're good. I think we've got our shadows blocked in. Oh, I forgot this sleeve. Let's see how flat that looks compared to all the rest of this. Oh, and the inside of this sleeve. Got to get the inside there. So yeah, if you guys see me like rubbing my shoulder every once in a while, it's because I've got this little pinchy muscle up here going eek, eek. You know, how you, like you do when you've been painting for a while. We'll get up and stretch in a little bit. That'll help a little. Yeah, pumpkin orange is good on leather. You could, um, if you ever run out, though I doubt you will with seven bottles, you could always use orange brown or burnt orange or a combo of the two. A combo of the two would probably put you uh, close. Those are also my colors that I like to use for le highlighting leather. Orange Brown 9201 and Burnt Orange 9111. All right. And then I've got that shadow there, a little shadow down here, a shadow on the back of this. You know, and if you miss a shadow, it's not like it's a catastrophe, but it's nice to have it all blocked in. And then uh, I got the inside of that sleeve, but I didn't get the back side of this sleeve. See how flat this, this looks now compared to all the rest of this with its dramatic shadows? Oh, that's too bad, Jemmer Jack. Bodies will do that. Bodies are weird. I still remember the numbers. Yeah, as long as I make them or if I use them a lot. Like, uh, 89511 Osirian Sand for a Pathfinder. Like, I don't remember most of the Pathfinder colors, but I use Osirian Sand all the time, so I remember that one. Usually I have to mix the batch, like, a bunch, uh, to remember all the numbers. And Pathfinder was done, like, not that long before I left, so for the most part I don't remember a lot of the Pathfinder. But I remember Osirian Sand because, darn it, that paint is useful. Best yellowy off-white ever. Get this color. It's so useful. All right. There we go. Now we can start highlighting as black. What really helps is if you start doing core exercises. I know nobody wants to hear that. 
everybody would rather hear, just go spend money on a new mattress, you'll be fine, or this or that or the other thing. But to be honest, I started sleeping so much better, guys, when I started doing just a little bit of yoga in the morning. Because <laughs> my core got stronger, and then I slept better. Because all of your all of your stuff probably isn't caused by your mattress, it's caused by your muscles. But that's all I'll say about it. I'm just going to say, hey, yoga, it works. Core strength. And now I'm going to go back to highlighting there. I return you to your regularly scheduled program. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you know, your warranty expires at 40, right, Valandar? But, but I'll, I'll hold to my conviction that, that it is strongly tied to how weak the body gets if you don't use it. And a lot of us don't use our cores. No, fun isn't one of the, like, I, but I, you know what? It takes me like 10, 15 minutes to do core exercises every morning and I, and I sleep great and I don't have back pain anymore. So totally worth it, guys. Totally worth it. I know it's not fun. I totally am with you on not fun. The truth hurts. Go yoga. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, exercise and diet, Chanel. That's all I'll say. Like, honestly, that's it. Keto diet. I, I lost, I've lost 60 pounds since you saw that Dark Sword video. And most of that, well, part of it was gluten-free. And then the rest of it was keto. Ketosis diet. And then I added in the core exercises because my back hurt too much. And now I feel, I feel better than I did in college honestly. And it's like, it's not much guys. Like I walk, you know, every day and I do a little bit of core exercises in the morning and I do do a little bit of physical therapy stuff at night, but that's mostly just yoga. Like it's, it's more, it's like four exercises that I do. It's, it's not a whole lot. So it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much to change your life for the better. The diet stuff was a bit more work over time, but once you've got it nailed, it just becomes habit. And uh, honestly, the pandemic kind of helped because it made me cook all the time. Hey, thanks for those gift subs. Dang, Anna Marion. Nice, Carew. Nice. Doesn't it feel good to lose all that weight? Like, honestly. Sweet. Yeah, cooking from home is a really huge help, for sure. Yeah, well, grats to all you new guys who have, uh, who have tier one subs to Reaper now. So I mixed up, uh, I just pretty much mixed up a pure grave gloom. You can see how bright this green is. It looks much brighter when you get it out of the bottle. I like it a lot. It's a great lichen and fungus color, and it's good for moldy old necromancers like this. So, yeah, I started to learn to cook when I went on gluten-free because it's kind of self-defense. You're just like, man, store-bought stuff doesn't taste very good, so I'm just going to learn to cook it myself. Um... I'm going to actually mix some of this grave gloom, grave gloom into this to make it a little bit lighter. This is our first highlight color here, this gray green. And uh, it's a mixture of Death Knight Black and Grave Gloom. I want to say it's about two to one more green than the black. Oh, yeah, for sure. How did you lose it, Karu? Did you, did you follow a program or what did you do? Everybody always wants to know. You know, when you when you lose weight, they always want to know how. Sadly, I wish it worked like that, Valander. I wish it worked like that. So I'm going to be doing to bring up the edges and and uh, bits here with this uh, first green gonna kind of it what the nice thing is that it kind of fades out the fabric too so it's going to make the ends of this black fabric lo look really faded out and worn in addition to being a green greenish highlight yeah drinking more water that helps a lot basement i drink a lot um about 80 to 96 ounces a day yeah i got you Carew. So you started eating better and got yourself moving? Yeah, Osirian Sand, 89511. 
that's true and true and untrue, Valendar. I mean, you still can. There are still ways to lose belly fat, but I find uh, I find it demoralizing that everybody blames age. And yeah, hormones have a lot to do. It does make it a lot harder, but it's not impossible. Like sometimes when I talk to people, they make it sound impossible, but I've still lost weight even being as old as I am. So I don't know. I wish they were a little more encouraging. <laughs> There's so many things to like, oh, if you're in menopause, you're doomed, you know. <laughs> hey, Absalon, good to see you. Doesn't it look great as a highlight? It gives you that really faded out, like kind of creepy. Now I'm going to I'm going to thin down this green though cuz it's got a lot of uh it's got more white in it. So, and I'm probably going to actually add some of this to it. I want it to be a little bit less um bright for the fabric. So, we may use the green. We'll probably use the green like intensely up here on our little worm maybe. You're about a foot too short. <laughs> That's funny. Um, it depends on what you're doing. I almost never use linen white anymore because there's so little yellow in it. I find it doesn't have a difference. I use pure white or I use creamy ivory or I use Osirian sand. Creamy ivory is a more of a buff color, a brownish yellow. So remember that Osirian is brighter. It's more saturated. So that will influence what you use it on or it should. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure Valandar. Yeah, sometimes crap happens and you just like, for me, it was the surgeries. It was getting diagnosed with my, um, my gut issues, possible Crohn's disease and, uh, going through all those surgeries. Um, and then it was like, I'm just not going to deal with this anymore. Sometimes what is it? What is the old saying where, uh, you know, it's about a farmer had a dog, and then and the dog kept yelling, and the the guest person asks, you know, why should dog keep like crying out? And the do and the farmer's like, well, he's sitting on a nail, and the guy's like, well, why doesn't he move off the nail? And the farmer's like, well, it doesn't hurt enough yet. And we're like that as humans. I was like that. It didn't hurt enough yet until I hit surgery, and then it hurt enough, and I made changes. So thank you for saying I look amazing. I am very happy with how I look at my age. And that's an understatement. Like, I would love to lose another 20. But if I don't, I'm still okay. So. Yeah, I switched over to um, natural sweeteners like stevia for the most part. I still have, I still use a little bit of sugar sometimes in my baking. Because if I'm making something for David, it just makes it um, taste a little more like he's used to. So now let's do some highlighting on top of the arm, guys. Uh, bleach linen actually is a go-to. I like that better than linen white if you're going to go for that kind of soft white highlight effect. Um, as you guys know, I do use a fair amount of bleach linen. If I want a softer highlight and I don't want to uh, hit, hit things with the impact that um, pure white has, then I'll use bleach linen. All right, I'm going to grab some of this, some of this darker green and a little bit of the uh, Death Knight Black. I'm going to paint in the shadows up here because you see how, how like stark that looks in here with very, very dark shadows. Yeah, I'm the same crew. I don't act my age, much to my mother's dismay. I don't, I don't, I think that, you know, it's best not to. So now I'm putting a little bit of a mix of our green highlight and the Death Knight Black up here. And I'm raising up the color, the overall shade of this area because it's all facing the light. So even the shadows should be lighter than down here, if that makes sense. Stark Naked is like the funny, one of the, my probably my favorite funny color of those three. Because I used, uh, I think I used, I can't remember if I used Ned, Ned, Ned Stark or, uh, or John, John Snow as my, uh, reference for that color. But I actually did, uh, use, uh, photographs of the Starks of Winterfell, um, <laughs> to, uh, to make that skin color as a reference. 
So there you go, guys. It is a pun. Yes, it's a pun. Uh, yeah, this is the way I normally paint Basement Forge. Mushroom Queen, I put a lot of colors down because I didn't know how I wanted to paint her. If I... If I really am not sure of a color scheme off the bat and I need to work it out, I will do a base coat over the figure. And just for reference, let me grab that model. So Mushroom Queen, but if you, if you notice basement, I still haven't painted any of the bottom. So I had to block in, I wanted to block in the rest of this so that I could figure out the colors. But when I normally paint, the way that Anne chooses to paint, this is how I do it. Like, I just do it bit by bit. And the reason I do that is because it gives me a feeling of completion, even when I still have a lot to go on the model. So if you suffer from, oh my god, I have so far to go on this model syndrome, and then you put it down and you don't pick it up again, and you start something new, try doing it this way. What it does is essentially if I can make this cloth look good in this session, I'll be excited and happy because I'll have completed the dark cloth and it will keep me going. It will motivate me to keep painting. That's why I do it. It's self-defense. But if, if I was not sure about the colors on this model or I was totally out to see, because I really, I mean, even though I used kind of a, a reference pick for the Mushroom Queen, I still wasn't sure how those colors were going to be located or how it would work because her sections were very different from the Mushroom Guy on the artwork. Uh, so I had to mess around with it. Yeah, Chibi. Yeah, Drown Apple Pink's good for that. It's good for bruises, too. Bruised areas. So, I brought up this area, and you can see that the shadows are lighter now. Even the shadows are lighter. And that will uh, help me convey that this arm is facing the light. I'm going to put a slightly smaller highlight now toward the center. But this green is the highest I'm going to take that arm up. And I may even uh, glaze it down again because I don't want this to go too light. Yeah, doesn't work for me, Lord Nobody. Everybody's got different tactics, but since he asked why I did what I did, I just wanted to let you guys know that's, that's a tactic. Um, Zenith, some people really like the Zenith and the sketch style too, to, just because it lets them see the lights and darks and the details of the model. They get excited about it and paint it. Bottom line is whatever works for you, you should. Whatever works for you. I'm going to do a little bit of a glaze. Go back and forth on this. I want the edges to be actually lighter than, uh, the areas up here because... I want that faded effect that, that where the cloth is really, really getting faded and stuff. Yeah, because I paint in such tiny sections of time, if it sits there and stares at me for too long with no progress anywhere, then I lose, uh, I lose the oomph. Untamed Painter, um, just had somebody uh, ask this on my Patreon too. Honestly, if you have a light color that goes chalky, go back to the mid-tone and glaze. Um, do a wash over your area with it. That should take down the chalkiness. If not the mid-tone, the shadow color. Just do a light wash over the whole thing. That should wipe out your chalkies. From that point on, I would actually not use the highlight color. I would actually just bring it up with pure white. Because if you're having trouble with chalkiness, chances are pure white's going to kind of cover you a little bit better because it's got a very, very high pigment count. Um, a lot of times whites will go chalky, uh, depending on their composition and your usage. It's a combination of how much you're thinning it and how you're using it and all of the above. So what I, I almost always use pure white to build my highlights to kind of protect myself against that. But if I do go chalky, I just do a wash or glaze with the, the deeper color of the, of the triad. So sometimes a mid-tone, like you want something at least like um, tan skin or rosy shadow, I would say. 
but that's that's the treatment for chalkiness it's just to do a wash or a glaze with uh with a deeper color that's not got as much white in it yeah i, I would use pure white instead to build highlights because the amount of pigment and the base have a direct impact on whether a paint goes chocolate chalky it's not like consistent like it does have some user input there but like how much you thin will definitely impact that as well um but yeah, the fix is to just uh, wash or glaze. And, and I always, I find when I use pure white to build my highlights, I seldom get chalkiness. All right. So we've got some nice fading going on down here on the edge of this. And I like it. So we're going to keep going. Uh, let's get the edge of here. Now I will maybe build some slight highlights here on these uh, folds as they come up. I don't want to leave the area totally dark. Yeah, yeah. What color do you, like, is there a specific color you're having a problem with, on Untamed Painter? Because I could, I could do a specific troubleshoot probably for you. So I'm going to just bring up some of these folds just a little bit more. And I'm going to bring some of them down just a little bit more. So they're not going to meet in the middle. I'm still going to have this deep shadow. But what it's going to do is still bring out the texture a little bit more. Just along the edges of some of these uh, gouges in the cloth and stuff. And along the edge of the sleeve, I'll definitely bring it up with some green to make it come out a little bit. So that looks nice. That That's coming out nicely. I haven't figured out what color I want his uh, flesh to be. We might go uh, add some white in with our Necromancer purple and maybe, maybe even some greenish hues in there. We'll have to see. I might go green with his skin. haven't decided sometimes i feel like i have to block in the model to get an idea and sometimes i'm just like oh, i'm just gonna wing it and it really depends on the model and how like how i'm feeling about it like if i'm feeling very friendly toward the model and going yeah i, I can do this then i'll just forge forward and see where it takes me and if i feel like the model's going to be difficult as i actually felt like mushroom queen was going to be uh, then I will try to figure it out in advance so that I don't get stuck. Moody skin on the highlight? I don't know moody skin. Is that one, is that one from a special set? Is it one from a set that I haven't, uh, no, it's not this one. Is it from a different company? Moldy skin. Oh yeah. Moldy skin has a lot of white in it, but, um, it also has some greens and yellows and those can add transparency. Uh, so yeah, I would, uh, I would grab the zombie and maybe take it up with some white and see, I would glaze with zombie, um, and see if that helps zombie or moldy. And then, or, uh, or do a wash with moldy, a real light one. That can help. The way that I was taught to fix it back when I was painting with, you know, before I even made Master Series was that if you took your mid-tone and you did a wash with it or a glaze with it, um, you could fix the chalkiness. Oh, no problem. <laughs> I don't know. Models with wings are problematic. I, I almost always start with a plan or I just run out of oomph on them. But that's because after years of painting Succubi for Reaper, I'm somewhat traumatized by wings. <laughs> yeah, there's always a chance when you thin down really pale colors that you're going to get a little bit of that chalky effect, so... Another way you can try to get around it is by adding a little medium to the paint. So like a matte medium or a brush on sealer. Sometimes that helps as well. It does change kind of the way the paint acts though in the feel of the paint. So do be aware of that. That's why I typically don't do it. I will just glaze. I don't like, uh, I'm so used to how Master Series feels when I thin it with water that um, that's how I can get my the best effects with it. 
So I don't like to add other things to that because I feel like it uh, disrupts my ability to do that, to get good effects. I have to compensate then for the change in consistency. So we're using this green to make really pretty. This is really pretty. I really like this. This is a very complex um, highlight and shadow. Purple and green. One of my favorite things. And the paint wasn't smooth. Transparent minis with the clear paints. The yellow is in a different base. If you're having trouble with that yellow, um, I would recommend switching to like uh, lantern yellow, Lord Nobody. The clear yellow is in a in a different base uh, because we were having a little bit of issue with the pigment. There was a chemical issue we were having back at the beginning, and so I had to change it. So it does not act quite the same. Um, if you are having trouble with it, normally I don't have trouble with it, but if you are, change to uh, go to bones, grab canary yellow or uh, lantern yellow, depending on if you want a greenish yellow or a orangish yellow. Both canary and lantern are very close to clear brights and can be used easily over the um, transparent plastics. Oh, Grim Talon. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Grim Talon is the rock, isn't he? I would probably be even scaredier of that. I always have to have a plan with wings. Because there's so much you can do with them. Like Sphinx. Like, I had to have a plan for Sphinx. You guys remember Sphinx? Yeah, so I always try to have a natural reference, something I can work from. Oh, I totally forgot the back side of the sleeve here. So I need to take some of my medium, kind of my dark green highlight, and bring these highlights down just a little bit. Just so I get a little bit of a suggestion, so you can see it kind of trailing off there. Because I, I do want some of these details to, to show up a little bit. So having a, a highlight here and there, just a small one. You don't want to go up to your full highlight. You just want a little bit of something there. Just a little bit lighter so that the details come out. So you can still see that this is getting a lot more light than that is. Yeah, clears are cool that way. But yeah, if you want clear yellows, like clear yellow still you still is good for all the other uses of a clear, but I could see how it would be a little bit strange over a transparent. So that's why I say go for canary or lantern. Just a little bit different. I still regularly use clear yellow myself, but but I don't paint transparents. Like, that's not something I do a lot. We'll get our highlights on the back cloth here. Oh, hey, it's almost time for stretching. So when highlighting black, anything that you want to stay black, remember to make your highlights very small. And when I'm done with this, I will essentially go back and take another look at it and see if it's going to read, if it's reading like black so far. And I will probably need to do that again and again as I paint, as I fill in more areas of the model. So you want to leave a lot of very dark area. You want to highlight just enough to bring out the details. Like so. So you can make it look really cool, this ragged cloth, just by highlighting around the edges and the holes in it and uh, having everything else be dark. And I'm not using my usual kind of a crossways uh, highlight. I'm going more vertical, more line highlight, because I don't want to cover too much of this area with this highlight because I want it to stay black. 
or close to black. It's a mixture of Death Knight Black and this uh, Grave Gloom. Green. Coves. The shading is entirely Death Knight Black. The highlights are Grave Gloom Green mixed with uh, Death Knight Black. So this is, again, kind of like yesterday. This is another example of using a completely different highlight color to highlight. Um, so in this case, I'm using a green to highlight a purple. I actually love using purples to shade greens. So yeah, these are from the Grave Gloom or the Gloom and Grave, Gloom and Grave box. And uh, we're using a combo of colors on this. Some are from the Gloom and Grave and some are from the um, Dark Reach. Dark Reach box. But we haven't uh, dug into all of our colors that we're using yet since we're just focusing on the cloth right now. But I think we're going to put some red on soon because I want to I want to pop this red cloak on. So I'm going to get a f kind of a faster finish on these uh, dark cloth areas. But you can see how that makes that black look really good. And since this is a very stylized miniature, like with the, the way the cloth is going and the way the tentacles are, and you know, it's a, it's a very stylized figure. So going with more of an edge highlighting kind of thing works really well for it. It works really well with the lines of the figure. It helps accentuate the movement of all of these different pieces of fabric. Works with it. Hello, tiny clans. I am Anne. I am I am currently um, disrupting the uh, Reaper Kickstarter fulfillment stream <laughs> because our reg our regularly scheduled shows are on at this time. Um, but don't worry, if you're here for the Kickstarter fulfillment stream, it will be back after I am done in about forty minutes. But right now we're painting a cool Crimson Herald sculpted by Bobby Jackson. And I'm doing black, near black, essentially, but highlighting it. <laughs> Sean Ald, you're funny. Yes, it is. Um, hold on, I always keep the card close by. So this is a Bones Black. That's the item number. Crimson Herald by Bobby Jackson. He's pretty cool, undead necromancer type dude. I like him a lot. But yeah, on this show, I always paint Reaper. On my own channel, I paint some other stuff. But on this show, it's always Reaper. All right. So let's go back here. And then we'll, uh, after I highlight this last little bit down here... Thank you for the shout out, Quindy. That's twitch.com, uh, twitch.tv slash painting big. And I work on, uh, usually, lately I've been working on my competition piece for that. So Ms. Templar. She's much bigger, as you can see, than little dude is. So different kinds of painting. Different kinds of painting on my own show. And that's on Thursdays, actually. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon before Reaper Live. But here, we paint Reaper stuff, and we paint little stuff. 28 mil. Although, I have done some monsters. And I have to replace Genie with a monster. We'll probably do an ogre. I think I've got uh, an ogre in my box of blisters. See, I probably went a little bit too much. That's too liney down there. If, you, if you're highlighting kind of with lines, and you can really see it, go and kind of buff it out, make it blend a little bit better. So that it looks a little better. That's funny. That's funny, Mush. So there's the Curse of the Necromancer. Watch out for your knees. The Dark Gods demand a sacrifice if you're going to play a Necromancer is what I'm hearing. Alrighty, I think I think we might be pretty good here. Gotta get this little part down here. Yeah, 
You sure you weren't just, you know, as as the GM wasn't just uh, running around and kneecapping them at night? Like, to teach them a lesson about playing necromancers in his or her game? Not that I would ever do that as a GM. Alrighty, that's good enough for now, I think. Some of this uh, highlights will show up, or, but for better or for worse, once we have other stuff done on this. Alrighty, do -do. let's get some red on this guy. So we have a couple of different reds that are in our box of six colors that we're going to use. Just a reminder, the colors we are using on this model, the only colors that we're gonna use on this model and everything else will have to be mixed are these guys. So most of these are from the Gloom and Grave uh, Fast Palette set and two of them are from Darkreach. And we are going to be working with our Necromancer Purple, our Hellborn Red and probably with some Troglodyte Tan. So let's switch over from our, our greenish colors to our reddish and brownish colors now. And figure out what we want to do for this red. I'm thinking I'm going to start with the Hellborn Red as a base. And I'm going to shade it with the Necromancer Purple. There are other parts of this model I may go much more Necromancer Purple on. But more mixed with white. With our Vampire Pallor. Which is our stand-in for white. So let's just try that. And see if this red is good or a little bit um, too saturated. I may need to take it down a notch. I may actually mix in a little bit of uh, Necromancer Purple, maybe even a little bit of our Death Knight Black, because this is pretty vivid, and that's going to fight. You can see even that it really doesn't like our greens. It's a little bit too bright. Let's put a drop of Necromancer Purple in there. I do like the Hellborn Red a lot, though. There are two, there are two Reaper Con sets. Uh, the fast palette for doom and gloom, or doom and gloom, haha, <laughs> grave, grave and gloom, or gloom and grave, and uh, dark reach. So we're only using colors from those sets today. And they will almost certainly, if you can't afford to get a swag box, you, they're almost certainly going to be available at, during the con separately. All right, so I dropped a little bit of our purple in there. What's that, what that's going to do is it's going to darken it. It's going to mute it a little bit because uh, the purple in here is going to fight with the yellow that's in this one. And I can tell there's yellow in this because it's a very orangey red. I'm going to pop another drop of that in there and see if I can take it down even further to a color that isn't fighting with this green. I do think... Hmm... We'll try it. We'll try it. Because uh, mostly it needs to not fight with the uh, with the black. So this is about a four drops of the Hellborn Red with two drops of Necromancer Purple. And let's see how this works. I'm going to push this out with such a dark model. Having white in the frame bleaches them out quite a bit. There we go. Yep. Yeah, most of the colors that we're using come from Gloom and Grave. The other two come from Dark Reach, the two fast palette sets. And I forgot to highlight his head, so I'll have to come back. I'm going to put this down and see if I like it. I do think I need to shade it pretty heavily to like it. It's still pretty bright, which isn't a deal breaker. But I need to watch it. It can't stay too intense. Or it'll be kind of distracting and I won't like it as much. Especially if I'm going purpley pink with these tentacles down here. Um, that color is going to fight with that because this is a kind of a reddish orange. And if you use colors on the model that are too close together on the color wheel, they will fight. Absolutely, they will fight. The other thing that's coming in on this is that since we used a green to highlight this black... It's going to make this look more red. And this red is going to make those look more green. So all something to think about. I'm going to put this down anyway. And then I'm going to muck around with it. I'm going to probably shade it pretty hard with that Necromancer Purple. And mix in some of the Troglodyte Tan to, uh, to create a highlight. Which is also going to mute it out. And I may actually use some Death Knight Black to shade it. 
to bring it in closer to our cloth color down here. He is called the Crimson Herald, though, so if he does have a fairly bright red capelet, then I'm, uh, I wouldn't call it, uh, it wouldn't be a deal breaker. I can't really call this a cape, I call it a capelet. It's like a little shawl. He's wearing a little shawl. He gets cold, what can we say? There we go. Here we go. There we are. All right. Just getting these little bits. This is where we have to be a little bit, you know, a little bit tighter with our brush control. Although obviously it's not a deal breaker. If we mess up, we just grab our Death Knight Black and cover it over. Then I want to go under here and I want these little cloth bits hanging up, hanging down around his face to also be red. Yes, exactly, Bergala. Always check, Madoc. Always check to make sure your address is correct. I got my email confirmation shipping. I don't know. I don't know if I was on wave one. I may have been on wave two. I don't know. I don't remember what wave I was at all. I put in that order so long ago. I did go and check my address, though. I always do. I'm always convinced that my Kickstarter addresses are not up to date. I've been moving lately, so it's like I'm paranoid about it. So it never hurts to check. It's always better if you did if you do find out you screwed something up. It's bet it's always better to reach out to Reaper so that they can fix it and make it right. But check your uh, pledge manager first. We always get so many people who just don't realize that their email is wrong or their address is wrong, no matter how many emails we send out. So, yeah, check your spam folder also. Green users is absolutely correct because sometimes that stuff does go to spam. I'm gonna take my dark uh, Death Knight Black and really shade the inside of this, uh, the faceless zone, so to speak. Maybe I'll make his hands bone, like bone colored. That's, that's sufficiently deathly. Then we can have his little headdress be like bone and his hand will be bony and maybe with some green. And then his uh, book pages will also be that bone color. That will work because then we're repeating and these are bone spikes, I think. So I think that'll work really well, actually. Alrighty. Just always kind of keeping an eye on, okay, how am I going to make this work color-wise? With a limited palette, you always want to keep an eye on it. Yep, yep. Quindy with the, with the voice of reasons. Too early to be concerned. Okay, the question is, where else do I want this red? Hmm. I might just sit on it here. I might have to bring it, like I said, I might have to bring it in down here a little bit. You always, with, with accent colors, you want to repeat them around the figure. But right now, I'm, uh, I'll probably do the bookmark, actually. Let's do that. Let's do the bookmark. That will help. You never, when you're using a brighter color, you never want to use it in just one spot on the model. Your, uh, the eye is going to find it a lot more pleasing if you repeat it around the model. The eye of the viewer and your eye. It's reassuring that even a necromancer needs a bookmark. Okay. 
There we are. Just going to block that in. That'll help me. Yeah, that helps a lot. You can see how just repeating that has helped. Um, I'll probably bring in some of this color somewhere up here or down there as well, just to have it like around the model. But we'll see. We'll see. I'll have to figure out where it fits too. There. Okay. So we'll sit on that for now. All right, let's get some Necromancer Purple and shade this and see if I can uh, see how I like it. I do love this Necromancer Purple, and I think it's going to be a new favorite color. It's a really, um, as you can see, it's a very, very plummy, plummy color. It's pretty sexy. Good job, Sadie. It's a purpley red, just so you guys can, it's really raspberry actually, and I love raspberry color. This is very raspberry, see it? This is a pretty color. It's gonna be a great shading color. See that? Definitely raspberry. Pair it with a dark blue and you would get plums. So we'll just take that and we're gonna see what we can do with that. It might not quite be dark enough. I may need to mix a little bit of the Death Knight into it. It is going to cool off this red a little bit. Make it a little the purple is going to make it a little less orange. Going to shade around the top here. Going to put the shadow in the folds of the cloth. And depending on how much you use, you will shift the color of this cape. So if you only use tiny touches of it, then you won't notice an appreciable shift. But if you use a lot of this purple color, then the cape will definitely start to shift away from this orangey color. And it's all how much surface you take up. And that is up to you. So if I block in more purple right under that, it'll shift the color just a little bit. But this isn't quite dark enough to give me the shadows I'd hoped for. Not a lot of contrast. So I do think I want to... Very cool. Tan skin is awesome, Munchkin. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, it is a pretty color, isn't it, McQuindy? Yeah, so it's it's very much taken it down, but now I want a little more contrast. So I'm going to grab my Death Knight Black, which is actually, you remember, a very, very dark purple. We're going to add a drop to this raspberry color. and see what that does to it. I, I suspect it will make it super pretty. So there's our one drop of Death Knight Black. I mean, it's a super pretty color already, but I think it's gonna make it even prettier. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, ooh that's pretty. Look at that, mm-hmm. So. Now that's a good shadow color. I can take it, I can take a little bit more dark, bring my folds out a little bit more with this. So we are doing limited palette with this. So we're only using six colors and we're mixing everything else. Um, and this is one of the fun parts of limited palette is just mixing things and seeing what you get and finding really good combos that otherwise you might not have looked into ever. Then you can make a little uh, note of them and uh, use them on some of your other minis also. So much darker shadow here to bring out the difference between the top and the bottom of this uh, wrap on the shawl, the granny shawl. Sorry, sorry, necromancer. Grannies can be necromancers too. So 
They bake you chocolate chip cookies of death. That calls to be a D&D &D character. Somebody put that in their game. The gran Granny Necromancer. She has a lot of skeletal cats. Oh yeah, I really like limited palette painting. I tend to do it a lot because I just enjoy it. I think it looks cool and it, it sets you up for, uh, especially if you're in a color rut, like if you're in this, I'm always using the same colors uh, world, which a lot of us do get into. Um, going limited palette can really help. Even if one of the colors in the limited palette is one of your colors that you use all the time, as long as the other ones are different, you're setting yourself up to, you know, have a little bit more fun and try a few more different things. Yes, photos of all of her, or portraits, if you're in fantasy world. Portraits of all her uh, her grandchildren, quote-unquote, on her walls, yes. They could be her actual grandchildren, but they're not that, they're, they're something quite different now that she's raised them. <laughs> they're so much more obedient this way. But yeah, totally magical knitting needles. Each one is a wand. And instead of a wand of wonder, one of them could be an I wonder what you've been up to wand where, you know, she forces you to, you know, admit that you've been, you know, stealing your cookies from the cookie jar. Unfortunately, they're undead cookies, so you're slowly turning into a zombie. You know, cool stuff like that. So now that I've started to really get that dark, notice how much bloodier this red has become. Like, there's just enough cool tones now to balance the warmth out. Charm person. <laughs> there's got to be even, even funnier... There should be a wand of mending. It's like the most useless wand ever. It's a cantrip wand. <laughs> but it'd be totally useful for a grandma. <laughs> All right, let's mix up a lighter color. And once again, we're looking to fade stuff out because uh, his black cloth is faded. So here we're going to use troglodyte tan. Now troglodyte tan, as you can see, is, is a kind of a yellowish tan, which means that when you mix it with this reddish orangey color, it's going to take it more toward orange, right? Because it's got yellow in it. Even though it's also got some black in it, so if this almost looks a little greenish next to this, when it mixes, it should give us kind of a faded orange. So we'll do that. And I'm going to use my mix. I'm not going to use uh, pure uh, Hellborn. I'm going to actually take my mix and mix that. And if it was a Wand of Charm person, it would be a go sit in the corner until you've learned your lesson. Like it would be a Wand of Command and the command would be go, to, go sit in the corner. <laughs> yes, decanter of endless hard candy. Because nobody likes hard candy and it's evil, but grandmas always have it. Just more proof that she's an evil necromancer, really. So that's a faded out red. I like that. That actually looks as if it's uh, like a faded version of this color. This is the power of kind of these beige colors. I use Driftwood Brown this way also all the time, guys. Um, and even like Creamy Ivory, although Creamy Ivory is a little bit white for this. Uh, stained Ivory, the old Stained Ivory was better. But Driftwood Brown, Troglodyte Tan. If you want to get a color, make a color look as if it's fading. Like it's been out in the weather and adventuring and, you know, you've got edges, worn edges to a cloak or something. And you want to make it look like the dye is fading. Adding one of these light beige colors can really help with that. Desert Sand might work too. Um... 
Plus one cheek, cheek pinching. <laughs> Many necromancers are evil, and if it's a granny necromancer, I reserve the right to make her an evil NPC, tiny clans. Always keeping in mind that alignment in my games is highly subjective. Probably a better way to say it would be necromancers aren't all evil. But I like the idea of an evil granny. I mean, she's perfectly benevolent as long as you, you know, do what she wants you to and don't argue. Otherwise, if you, uh, if you do, you might get locked in the basement for a night with the ghouls. You're being too generalistic. This necromancer granny is evil. All right, let's see here. One drop of this. This is where I'm going to start adding in our white. And remember, we don't have a pure white. We've only got vampiric pallor. So we're going to add in one drop back here. I grabbed a brush full of this, a drop more of the troglodyte tan, and we're going to add a drop. Ah, oh no. Well, that came out a little bit too much. So that's going to be very light now. We'll deal with it, though. We'll deal with it. Ooh, light fleshy pink. There's a weird color for you. I'm actually going to grab more of this and put it in here. There it is. That's like kind of almost an antique rose. That's a good uh, monster gums color for you. So troglodyte, uh, or sorry, hellborn red troglodyte tan and vampire pallor or a white of your choice. Haha, <laughs> yes, Nomad Zeke, yes, Instagram. Evil Instagram. Mm. Who needs necromancy when you can weaponize guilt? Well, you know, necromancy at that point is just a bonus. Because some people just refuse to be guilted. Well, that's very irritating. So you got to have your, uh, your secondary option. And I grew up in a Catholic family, so I totally feel that weaponized guilt thing. Don't make me have flashbacks. Alrighty. Let's get this little fabric-y thing highlighted and that little fabric -y thing. And now we can see our details start come out. And this is a good faded color. I like this. I like it a lot. So that's making the highlights plus the shadows are how you make all your details come out. No, I think that having bone knitting needles makes perfect sense articulate. Articulate, rather. I'm sure that Granny was perfectly benevolent until one day somebody just went a little too far and she felt that she had to take things into her own hands. I'm using some stippling now to add some texture to these folds hanging around uh, his, her face. Um, I want to kind of suggest they might be kind of linked to the tentacles. Plus... They're so narrow, you can't do a whole lot with them. So adding a little bit of texture there makes them interesting. Yeah, I like that. That's good. All right, let's get this more of a realistic highlight. I've forgotten to... Uh, to stretch again. My, my neck bothered me at the start of the stream and reminded me, and then it promptly stopped bothering me, and I uh, forgot. Okay. 
I don't know. If if I had a, a granny who turned the entire town undead, I would I would just I don't know. That's that, that uh, yeah. You're you're getting toward evil there. You're getting toward evil. Good intentions. The road the road to um to unhappy un ungoodness is paved with good intentions. We're just gonna call it ungood. We're not gonna call it evil, just ungood. Chaotic well meaning is now a uh, alignment. T Pixie, all of these colors are new for uh, ReaperCon. They're from box sets at ReaperCon. So I'm kind of promoting them a little bit. Most of the colors we're using is coming from are coming from the Gloom and Grave Fast Palette. And then a couple of them are coming from the Dark Reach Fast Palette. I decided that uh, I would put some of these through their paces and get a feel for them. I'm really happy I did because I think they're super pretty. I really like them. Yeah, I think Chaotic Well-Meaning is now, is now in alignment. Yeah, they really are. So the ones we're using... are these guys. We'll line them up again and zoom out for you, T-Pixie. Hold on. So this is, when I do a limited palette, I like to choose around six total colors, and one of those is a near black, or at least a, a very, very dark, and one of them is a near white, um, just to give you options. And then the colors you choose from there depend on really what your uh, main color scheme is going to look like. So here... We've got a couple of options. Um, we could go, we're most likely going with the red green color scheme. Although we have purple here and we have a yellowish color here. So we could possibly switch that to kind of purple and greenish yellow, but we'll see. But yeah, these are really good. They're swag box colors. Um, and we'll probably, as I was saying earlier, I don't know for sure, check with Ed or Ron, but I'm pretty sure these will be for sale as separately during ReaperCon too. So I would say definitely um, pick up a couple of these sets. The, the Gloom Engrave and the um, Dark Reach really, I think, have some very nice colors in them. And then the Adventuring set is more of a basic color set. But I really like these. Hello, Humbug. Well, if you want to... What I always tell people to start off with is the starter set, which is 11 colors. So it's really uh, easy to start. There are essentially 11 colors that I picked that I thought were a good, would give you a good representative mixture of um, Master Series and let you, you know, try a lot of stuff. So like our, our best white and black are in there. We've got a really good red in there. We've got a really good blue in there, you know, stuff like that. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, these are very different from Citadel. Um, you'll find that different paint lines across the board have different qualities and different different ways to use them. Um, Master Series, if you are getting into more like washes or glazes or thinned paint, where you're really thinning your paint to do cool highlights and shading, um, Master Series is really good at that because I made them and that's how I paint. So I kind of made a paint line that worked to my strengths. Um, GW tends to, I don't know what iteration of GW you have, but they tend to, um, I like to say they, they hand you a fish instead of teaching you to fish. So they're a really good way to start in the hobby. They do that, I think, very well, um, getting people started in the hobby. But when you get to the point in the hobby where you're starting to get better, then sometimes you want, you know, more to learn how to fish instead of to just grab a fish. And then you start experimenting more with different paint lines. So Master Series is very different from GW. Um, things like Scale 75 and Vallejo are even are more different than that. Um, stuff like that. Dragon White versus Pure White. Let me think. I have to think about who is which white. I've made four whites now. It confuses me horribly. Um, I believe that Dragon can't remember if that's the one with the different base or the different additive set. <laughs> it's It's got, I will say that pure white is the most highly pigmented white. The others are not far behind. Um, 
but usually it's either a different base or different additives, different slightly different mix of additives. And I think that dragon is a slightly different mix of additives. Yeah, MSP is uh, very very nice and fluid out the gate. You could use it straight out of the bottle without thinning it. Or I, I always thin it like four or five to one for a base coat, but it's really smooth. Uh, and it really excels at staying in solution when you thin it. Alrighty, let's get the back of this faded out here. Let's grab some of this uh, kind of pinky color that I mixed up to fade out the bottom worn parts of this. And I've made myself a triad of this now. My triad is here. Te technically, it's kind of a quadrad because we used our purple color here to shade the red. Um, so I'm, I'm working with a double, double highlight. And this is the way I usually, at least two highlights usually up from the mid-tone. Uh, so starting with this one, which is closer to this color, so it won't leave as, um, big brush strokes. And then going up to the really pale color at the very edges. I'm using a very large brush, so I'm having to unload it a lot, notice. This is key to working with thinner paints because you have to water them down. And once you add all that water, the paint adds, acts differently and it's harder to keep control of it. Um, if you're airbrushing Master Series Airbrushes Like a Dream Humbug, go over to the Reaper YouTube whenever you have time and look up the House of Vex. Reaper has its own airbrush called the Vex. And uh, Aaron Lovejoy, who's a pro, um, pretty much puts it through its paces and talks about airbrushing with MSP. There are, I think, a couple episodes, and there might be one on this channel tonight, Quindy said. She wasn't sure, but she thought maybe. Uh, but yeah, Aaron is uh, fantastic, and uh, I think um, probably with Gundams you're airbrushing, so maybe not. If you're not, then maybe it wouldn't be as useful to you, or maybe it would. This Friday. Friday night. Sorry, Quindy. Thank you. House of Vex this Friday night. So... But yeah, MSP um, airbrushes really well because, as I mentioned, it doesn't separate when you thin it as much as a lot of other paint lines, and that makes it really nice for airbrushing. Like, that same quality that allows it to be thinned without separating um, nearly as much as many other paint lines uh, makes it very good to airbrush. So yeah, all right, getting this in, bringing some of these details out, making it fade out toward the bottom. I do probably need to thin my light here a lot more. Whenever you add white of any kind, you always want to add a lot more water. Otherwise you're going to get brush strokes. Get this uh, scarf now, the center part. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is you can use any paint line to paint anything. It's just some paint lines will make it easier and some will make it harder. And often that will depend on the tools you use. Um, you know, and how familiar, familiar you are with working with different paint consistencies and stuff. Yeah, if you're airbrushing, you should get coverage out the gate, Grey Wolf, though. I find that MSP covers quite well out of the airbrush, even thinned. I was always surprised when uh, Michael thinned it down and it got really good coverage. But if you're brushing it on, yeah, then I always recommend two coats. Just like GW says, it's two smooth coats for your base coat. They got that right. They might have stolen it from the rest of the hobby, but they got it right. But Duncan made it famous and is totally correct. So a little bit more highlights on the top of the scarf. 
Oh, you got your bones five? Core mechanical. Lucky you. Mine should be here today. Today or tomorrow. We'll see, though. Shipping's been slow, slower, so I, I should allow it till... Uh, I hope it gets here by the weekend. That's my hope. But yeah, enjoy. Enjoy, paint things, post pictures. Oh, MSP and Bones. All right. We'll give the spiel. The Bones spiel. Here's the dealio. Back when we had MSP. Nice, Pendrake. Back when we had uh, MSP Core and HD, Ed told me he wanted, after we had launched Reaper Bones, two or three. Um, Ed told me that he wanted a Bones branded paint line. So essentially he wanted a separate line that we would just put the Bones name on to, uh, to make a nice set for people who are just getting into the hobby that wasn't as huge and, and, you know, like overwhelming as core. So what I did is I got out HD and decided we would use that high density, better coverage formulation, uh, with Bones. And, uh, with the Bones line, I just tried to fill up some of the color holes that I saw in HD. But because I was much better as a paint line designer at that point, the Bones line just looked really good out the gate. And it started to outsell HD because it had the Bones name recognition on it. And it, like I said, it was probably the best thing that I'd done up to that point. And the metallics have all new technology in them as far as the flake. So... Pretty much Bones was a step up from HD, so it took over, HD was canceled, and then some of the most popular HDs were ported back into Bones after being adjusted slightly, I believe. Some of them may not have been adjusted slightly. Some of them were just popular, like Dragon Blue. Dragon Blue you get today is the same as the Dragon Blue you got in HD. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the paints have different viscosities. And the reason for that is that oddly and counterintuitively, the more pigment you add, the more fluid the paint gets. I, I do not deceive you. It's actually true. The more pigment you add, the more percentage of pigment you have in relation to the base and its resins, the less viscous your mixture will be. That said, some paints uh, in MSP are made with higher body bases for higher coverage. You can influence the coverage a little bit with your base, though pigment is the main influencer. There we go. Um, it's probably a habit. Like the isopropyl um, probably adds a, a little bit of uh, kind of breaks down surface tension a little bit is my guess. Don't want to use very much of it. Some people use it just because that's the airbrush thinner mix they always love to use with acrylic paints. And uh, Aaron might have a more, you know, cogent explanation of why he likes to use it. But I do see a lot of airbrush people using that nine to one mixture of water to isopropyl. Ah, dry faster. Thank you, Bryce. I knew you'd, you'd probably know. It's like the 90% isopropyl you can usually get at the store co coops. Yeah, don't ever add a lot. Yep. So just fading out now, fading out this red so that it works a little bit better. It is indeed Crimson Herald Day. It's about to be uh, the end of Crimson, Crimson Herald Day because guess what, guys? It's time to go back to your regularly scheduled stream. I.e. Kickstarter fulfillment. 
There we go. So we got, for the most part, we've got our reds pretty well done. I'm going to do one more little thing. Thus giving Justin and Quindy and everybody time to uh, prepare to go back to the Reaper stream. I'm just going to get a little bit of texture over here on this side bit. To differentiate it. And I still need to do a little bit on this side. We'll get that real quick. So what did we do today? We did a lot today, actually, if you uh, if you look at it. We had started with just the barest of base coats on our black, which really was uh, Death Knight Black, the liner from the um, Gloom and Grave set, Fast Palette, from ReaperCon. And we uh, then... Highlighted that by adding in portions of Grave Gloom, this awesome green. Then we decided to block in some of our red for our Crimson Herald, which I think is turning out quite nicely. Uh, and fade that out by adding some Troglodyte Tan and Vampire Pallor, which are our two like lighter colors in our limited palette that we're using. And we added in a little texture for these hanging frowns around his face to kind of like suggest they might be related to the like little tentacles down here, which I will also probably be using those texture effects on once we get there. So that's where we are right now, guys. And I think he's uh, he's looking really nice, actually. He's coming around. I like this model so far. Um, it's definitely a different color palette uh, using the tans and uh, greens to fade out. Uh, these colors is working really well for an evil necromancer guy who would not have brand new shiny stuff. Uh, so I'm liking that a lot. We'll have to continue experimenting. Right now I'm thinking maybe the worm needs to be uh, this pink color, actually. This pink highlight color. I'm kind of thinking the worm needs to be that uh, with some purple shadows. Um, so that'll be nice. That'll uh, extend this color to a different area of the model. But yeah, so that has been your episode of Reaper Pro Tips. Tomorrow is Wyvern Day. Wyvern Day, uh, not Wyvern Wednesday, Wyvern Thursday. And I hope you all have a lovely day. I hope you enjoyed our stream today with Mr. Crimson Herald. And once again, there is your item number. He is a lot of fun. This is the Bones Black. I don't, I don't remember if we have a metal version of him, but he is a lot of fun to paint so far, so I would totally recommend him. Alrighty, I'm going to go and get my walk done and my lunch, and I hope you all have a lovely day watching the rest of Reaper Fulfillment. And good luck to those of you who are waiting for your box to ship. May you get your shipping notice promptly. All right. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me, all guys. It was fun. All right. <laughs>